going with Mike Duddy. The Roman Catechism was very much intended for the priests in aiding their instruction to the faithful, but it was also to teach them as well. The first point this very paragraph we are plucking the sentence from makes is, with regard to the consecration of the wine, which is the other element of this sacrament, the priest, for the reason we have already assigned, ought of necessity to be well acquainted with and well understand its form. What is the reason that the author is referring to here? This reason is to be found in the first and opening paragraph regarding the form. The reason is as follows. The purpose of this section is to guard against most shameful mistakes on the part of priests at the time of the consecration due to ignorance of the, of the form. So even if I am wrong and I'm not, Mike Duddy's argumentation here on this point is extremely fatuous. This portion of the catechism was for priests to properly instruct them on the form so that A, they understood exactly what the form is, and B, so that they know their meaning and where they came from. The whole point is to expound, to elaborate, and to teach here. So when the, when the catechism of the Council of Trent explains this, uh, we are firmly to believe that it consists in the following words, the form, that this is the chalice of my blood of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which shall be shed for you and for many unto the remission of sins. The, Catholic, the catechism here wasn't saying the words of the form are in these words. It is saying these are the words. We are firmly to believe that they are the words. And yes, Bishop Pavaronis has, I think, done an excellent work on uh, dealing with Duddy's parsing of the Latin and uh, I think John Daly has also done a very good job of it as well. This catechism is teaching priests against defects in the form of the, of the consecration. So Duddy's claim is, is that even the Latin is ambiguous as to what it's trying to say, and that we're supposed to read into it somehow as uh, the form is hidden in these words, meaning that's just the short form. This is my body and this is my blood is all that it takes to consecrate a valid Eucharist. The problem with that is most of the Catholic Church, and with the exception of two or three, I think, theologians that are more well known, uh, all unanimously agree that the long form is necessary. St. Thomas Aquinas, the Council of Florence, and De Defectibus all require the long form as a valid, a valid consecration formula. And the Catechism of the Council of Trent, it was authoritatively promulgated, and Albright says that it's a sticky point because we seem to have some sort of problem with interpreting what it says. We're just reading what it says. Even in the Latin, it says that the form consists of the following words, or the form consists in the following words. Due to the nature of the catechism and what they were dealing with there, as far as trying to avoid defects in the liturgy, in the form, this catechism, if it was saying what Duddy is saying it says, would be very explicit that the form necessary is, this is my blood. But that is not what it said. It said the form consists of the following words and then uses the long forms. So I, 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 I don't know where Duddy is getting that from at all. And to me, uh, I guess I'm going to have to be, be taught just a little bit further. And it's funny that, and I guess one thing I'd like you to answer for me in the, in the next time you speak, uh, Mr. Albright, is... So you think that for a valid consecration to happen, that the words, this is my, for this is my body and this is my blood, are necessary at minimum. And I will now surrender my time to you. <clears throat> All right, that was uh, three minutes and 56 seconds. So uh, okay. I guess I'll go ahead and I'll just do around four minutes or whatever. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start now. Okay. All right, uh, I'll start off by responding to Mr. Bird immediately off the bat as whether this is my body, this is my body, this is my blood is all that is needed at the minimum, as Mr. Bird asks. And um, I will answer by saying that it, there are a number of other factors that, of course, couldn't validate a sacrament. But if we're talking about everything, all the rubrics being in, all of the rubrics being in place, excuse me, this is my body and, and uh, an affirmation of the of, uh, of the blood is all that is needed. That is correct, and I would love to go into that even more. I hope we can deal with that from the scripture and from the fathers. I'd love to. But moving on, the catechism was ordered to be put forth, uh, uh, whether it is for priests or not. Mister Berg needs to realize that we don't hold to the infallibility of this catechism. The arguments for the catechism that are put forth by Piverunus and those of the CMRI come from them, 
They don't come from us. Uh, Piverunas did not reply, nor did Daly, to Dadi's uh, uh, second work dealing with Aladdin. They dealt with his first work only. They never replied to Dadi's final piece, which was about two, two and a half times longer than the first piece, and he dealt even more in depth. Clearly, clearly, Mr. Bird is not aware of how this dialogue has gone, or the fact that Piverunas promised a reply. So, do, so did the fathers Rudecki, and they never wrote up their replies. Mike Duddy is still waiting for a reply. Duddy never said the author was being ambiguous here, and Duddy is not the first one. He's merely affirming what the church has always said in regards to, this is my body, and this is my blood. Bird is clearly citing from the McEwen Callan English translation. Unfortunately, the English translation does not fully reflect that of the original Latin. If Mr. Bird is to be consistent, his study should have been done on the Latin, not the McEwen Callan English translation. What is interesting, though, is that the catechism is not being ambiguous. It's explicitly telling us that this is my body, is all that is needed for the form of the bread. And dealing with the wine, we'll go right back into it. The catechism uh, says, uh, from reason, no one, no one will be able to truly doubt concerning this form if he attends in this place also to what was said before concerning the form of the consecration of the element of the bread. For it is evident that the form of this element is contained in those words, which signify that the substance of the wine is converted into the blood of the Lord. Since, therefore, these words openly describe this, it is clear that no other form needs to be determined. Notice clearly what the Catechism is saying. It follows that the form must be determined in these very same words. For the wine, the very same words, which signify transubstantiation for the bread, and for the bread, are this is my body. I think it is interesting... uh, any time arguments are brought up regarding the, the Catechism of the Council of Trent, I, I've said it many times over in my, the works that I've written, debates I've done, uh, talks I've given, or even videos I've done, that we don't hold to the infallibility of the Catechism of the Council of Trent. My main source upon relying upon the fact that the new mass would be valid is from not just common sense, as Mr. Bird said in the beginning. It would be through an examination of, of what constitutes a valid transformation a valid uh, a metabolo, as the church fathers would say, a valid uh, uh, transubstantiation to transform the elements, basically. And it is more important if we examine what the church has said, what the fathers have said, what the Bible says. And it is important, hopefully we'll be able to touch upon that maybe uh, coming up next or later, to touch upon just what the arguments dealing with the union of the faithful are and those that emanate from the Council of Florence. I think we can continue – going on and on about the Catechism of the Council of Florence, but when it all comes down to it, even if the Catechism of the Council of Trent, excuse me, Catechism of the Council of Trent says, this is my body and this is my blood, is pretty much the form, we need to be, we need to realize the church has never infallibly defined the form of consecration. <clears throat> all right, okay, uh, whenever you're ready, you can go. Okay. You say that the church has never infallibly defined the form of consecration. I think that is where us as traditionalists and you guys as conciliarists depart as far as what our interpretations are. I, uh, in Apostolice Cure, Pope Leo XIII says, whenever you have a question as to what the church teaches or what the church holds, you want to look to tradition. And if you go back as far as you want, you are going to see that the words of consecration in the Western Rite have always been what the Tridentine Mass has. This is the cup of chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith. It will be shed for you and for many unto the remission of sins. The Council of Florence, and you can just say that the, the Roman Rite uses these words as the form. They weren't just saying, hey, by the, way, by the way, here's just a piece of information for you. They were including it in the council text, in the bull cantate domino, which is infallible. And I think you'll even agree with me that the, the bull cantate domino is infallible. And there is more, there is all of the evidence, when you look through all of the documents of the Catholic Church in the Roman Rite for 2,000 years, whenever it addresses the words of consecration, and the form of the wine. It is the long form used always. And you say that the church teaches the short form. I would like you to tell me where exactly does the church say 
that the only words necessary for a valid consecration in the wine in the Roman rite is this is my blood.